say this subject? Um, mm. uh, about, about dispensationalism? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay then. So from so from so from Hebrews, Hebrew, Hebrews to Revelation uh -huh. is is the is the books of the um, tribulation books. Uh huh. Okay then. So so when we read when we read those tribulation books like First mm -hmm. Peter, mm -hmm. James, uh -huh. uh, we, we we approach it the same way we would approach. Ah, okay, yeah, I okay. see. Mm -hmm. so yes. We approach those the same. We don't take everything literally mm -hmm. in that for us, right? Got it. Okay, so that is an easy question, thankfully. So, in answer to that, <laughs> so in answer to that one, uh, I actually uh, have a video that I highly recommend for the viewers online after they watch this video. It's called uh, Must Watch how to use dispensationalism, I think, and that'll be extremely helpful. So in or how to handle this. Okay, so basically some of you are probably lost, so let me try to explain this as briefly as I can. So dispensationalism, for some of you who don't know, what that means is we rightly divide the verses and books to the right time period and group of people. Okay, you might say, why is that? Because not all verses apply to us when you read it. So you, got, so you got to realize when you're reading a verse in the Bible that it may not apply to you. For example, Acts 2.38 says, Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Many Christian churches, well not even Christian churches, many churches today and cults use that verse to claim you have to get baptized for salvation. But that verse does not apply to us. It applied to a different group of people. Jews at a time period that was a transitional time in Acts that God eventually cast off the Jews temporarily and switched to Gentiles. See that? So that's what dispensationalism is. Brother Randall's question is basically this. So we know for a fact Romans to Philemon are the verses that apply to us Christians. See that? But we do know the Old Testament does not apply to us. And that's a no-brainer. He mentioned Gospels here. So some of you don't know this, but there are about four, or some people even put up to ten different Gospels that you can find. So it's not just one. So Randall, Brother Randall's question is pretty obvious here. Uh, statement is pretty obvious here that the Old Testament does not apply to us. For example, if you take God's name in vain at the Old Testament, you are stoned to death. So that verse obviously does not apply to us. That applies to the Old Testament. See, rightly dividing the verse and the book to a different time period and group of people is important, okay? So we know these books apply to us, okay? These don't. Not only that, some people don't know this. Hebrews to Revelation also do not apply to us entirely either. You might say, why is that? Because they are tribulation application. End times. No brainer, revelation. See, end times. No brainer, it's not Christians, it's what? Hebrews, that's Jews. See that? So it's a no brainer right there. Okay, now Brother Randall's question is this then, is that how do we uh, read this passage? Do we read it the same way that we read the Old Testament? But let me make it even more general. How do you read all of these? That's why there's a dangerous movement that I want you to remember called hyper-dispensationalism. Hyper-dispensationalism, they claim they believe in dispensationalism, like we do, which is true, but they're in hyper-form. You might say, how so? Hyper in the form that they go so much by this that any other verse that you read in the Bible is to be cut off. So basically, you should chop off like uh, five, six of your Bible and keep only 13 books in your Bible, which is Romans to Philemon. Well, obviously not. See, see, they take it too hard. They take it so far that they'll say every verse is applying to a Jew when no, it has application to the Christian church. Okay, so let me explain right here how you apply this. 
when you, re when you look at these, okay, it's important to understand that they do apply this one to the tribulation and this one to the Old Testament time, which is a no-brainer. But it is very important to understand that even in the midst of these verses, there are a few verses here and there that can apply to Christians. That's important to understand. You might say, really, even in the Old Testament? Absolutely. Like even, what's that? Like no, I was saying, mm -hmm. like, yeah. mm -hmm. like, Jesus is a faithful high priest. Correct, that's so a good one. Mm -hmm. that to us, right? Correct, so those are two examples. Those two are right. 1 John 1, 9, brother Randall, is denied by hybrid dispensationalists. And that's a very important verse for us about confession. Yeah. In fact, it's so bad online that dispensationalists online are denying confessing sins. Wow. Yeah. But, yeah. In that, but they're not dispensationalists then. They're hyper-dispensationalists. That's a big thing. That's an issue. Okay, so then how do we deal with this issue, right? So it's important to understand that there are verses that will apply to Christians in the middle of it. And it's undeniable. So um, one example is 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. We confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. People will say, no, that applies to tribulation Jews. Uh, no, you can't do that. The reason why is this, is because if you want to apply that to a tribulation Jew, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, then you're teaching like John MacArthur. Where basically, if you take the mark of the beast, as long as you confess it and repent, then you're fine. So you can go to heaven still with that mark on your right hand. No, uh, Bible-believing dispensationalists, we're not going, we don't, we don't say it that way. We'll at least, we'll at least say, if we're going to give sympathy to the person who take the mark of the beast, we'll at least say, no, you got to at least cut it off, according to Matthew 5. Yeah. Matthew 5 says you got to cut off your right hand. Yeah. And that was applying to the tribulation timeline. See? See, God does not want Mark, period. See that? Okay, now the point is this, is that, so that verse we can see right there, that that cannot apply to the tribulation. John included himself, he said, we, if we confess our sins. Not only that, the book of 2 John, he said the church there. See that? So that means us Christians are demanded to confess our sins to the Lord. In the Old Testament, if you look at the book of Psalms, it does not imply entirely to Jews. There's a passage there where it talks about the seed of Jesus Christ and those who are a part of his everlasting covenant from his seed who has eternal security and forgiveness. Well, that ain't Jews then. That's referring to his spiritual seed, the Christian church, at the book of Psalms. See that? Not only that, the apostle Paul, what could he quote for Romans and Philemon? Old Testament verses. Yep. How about that? So you can't be a hyper dispensationalist. Okay, then the question is this. The question is, how do I apply these verses? It's more it's actually more simple than you think. It does sound hard, but it's more simple than you think. Just look at the verses and see if they match or contradict Romans to Philemon. That's very important. That will be extremely helpful. Contradict or match. If it matches, then by all means, use that verse for the glory of God and abide your Christian practice by it. If it contradicts it, then you know that it's wrong. For example, 1 John 1, 9 again, we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. So, how do we know that matches with Christian? Because Paul mentions in Romans to Philemon, we should judge ourselves that we should not be judged and we should repent and seek forgiveness. See, that matches with 1 John 1, 9 right there about the importance of confession, getting right with God. But 1 first, first John chapter 2, it says if you hate your brother, then you have no eternal life in you. All right, we know that contradicts a Christian. Why? Because Paul said to the church at Romans to Philemon, they have an issue of hatred within the church. And this is a Christian church. But Paul said that they were saved by the blood and eternal, eternally secured. 
See that? So then, that's why we know that 1 John 2, that's a tribulation passage. Okay, same thing with the Old Testament. So anything that contradicts or matches. So then, what would you do when you read the Bible? Let's say you open the Bible. And people who watch my dispensationalism videos, this is what bothered them. They're afraid when they read the verse that I don't know if this applies to me or not. So this will be extremely helpful, okay? What the extremely helpful thing is, one, you get off the internet and stop looking at this deep kind of stuff yeah. to know your Bible more. Right. You're going to get more confused. Mm -hmm. If you want to actually enjoy your Bible reading, you got to go to basic discipleship 101, like I taught. You got to go to those basic doctrines and you got to focus on doctrines that is milk, yeah. foundational, right. based on Romans to Philemon. That way you know what's Christian and what's not Christian. So then when you read your Bible, you'll come across a verse that does not sound like a Romans to Philemon verse right, that you studied right, on. Right. And then you'll know, okay, that may not be Christian. But I don't know if it's Jewish or Christian, but it don't sound Christian to me. And then what's going to happen is that will be helpful for you, and then you just study it more, and you'll find out it could be a tribulation or a Jewish thing. See, that will be extremely helpful. So it's that you got to get your foundation first. Right. The second thing is, the second thing is, normally, normally, common sense when you read the Bible, you don't say when you read the Bible, as soon as you read Genesis 1-1, well, oh, I can't learn anything out of that. When you read the Bible, you let it apply to you, don't you? That's the first reaction. Yeah. The first reaction is when you read the verse, you let it apply to you. But as you keep reading it, if there's something in there that you know doesn't apply to you, then the common sense will dictate that doesn't apply to me. See that? For example, when we read Genesis 1 <clears throat> through 2, we read it as a matter of fact and let it apply to us and we don't make a big deal out of it. God made the whole world in six days and I'm living in it. See that? But as we continue to read Genesis and then jump to Exodus, where it says if you, stone, you have to stone someone to death to take God's name in vain, what does your common sense dictate right there? As you're reading it, all of a sudden, the mindset where you're applying the verses to yourself switches when you read that. That don't apply to me. That's Old Testament. That's how you do your Bible reading. That will be very helpful. What's very helpful is you first let it apply to you. And then if you come across a verse that doesn't apply to you, then you know that it switches to a different time period or a group of people. That will be extremely helpful. So the, that is, a, that is a, actually a very important question and maybe the most important question out of tonight, depending on who asks. But that, that will be very helpful for everybody who reads the Bible, brother.